Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Endless Space 2 on the Reawakening Update. I'm JC Proton, this is Series 10, Episode number 20, and we are picking up at turn number 58, and we're playing a standard faction of the United Empire on Endless Difficulty in a normal speed game. In this episode, we are finally at long last going to start putting putting up new uh, colonies, new outposts uh, on lava planets because we just learned the technology of how to settle on lava planets. So now that we just got that, we can start the process of settling on the planets where we have benthic gem deposits. And we've also got settlers en route heading to locations where we have virtual artifacts. And we're going to use those for our final tier of our system development upgrades. So the wheels are in motion. Also, we have some other good stuff happening. Um, fiddled around off screen and I figured out how I think I can negotiate a piece with the Vodiani. Um, other little things is right here where you have the emperor's buyout. That's that's how you do it. If you want to use influence to buy out a technology instead of um, spending all the science to do it, that's that's how you can do it. Is you 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 click there to buy it out with influence. So figured that out. Also, we're working on getting progress on this thieves and traders quest where we try to hunt down these ships here. And if we can defeat three of them, then we get the um, Bastion as a quest reward, which is a large Vodiani, not Vodiani, uh, uh, academy, yeah, that's it. We get a large academy ship. So I notice this guy is heading this way and so I'm gonna try to intercept him and close it go all the way over there yes I can reach excellent and we'll guard so we'll be there to catch him when he arrives And they're not super tough. Um, you're talking 725 attack, all energy. Looks like it has energy fighters on it. And then it has 677 defense, which is mixed kinetic and energy. So it's armor and shields. And he has almost 11,000 hit points. If I remember right, I think they have regenerative shielding and or some a little bit of repair on them too. Um, can't swear to it, but I, th I think I remember that from the last series. Um, but our fleet that's guarding here is got our hero, Admiral, and it's 5,200 attack, 4,100 defense, 47,000 hit points. So, yeah, we're totally going to stomp that dude. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll guard in these different systems here. stop them and we'll be able to we'll be able to catch them or maybe we'll go after them let's see this looks like this one's heading west this one's heading south this one's heading southwest so so that's very cool all that's i guess you'd say going according to plan more or less let's go ahead and throw down these uh these colony outpost ships and i'm realizing now it's like you know i should have started earlier over here with um i should have gone ahead and started uh outposts out here already and i didn't and i, I think i should have so i, I i'm going to queued up another outpost ship here at uh, aa4 Rhea. um because i it looks like these three systems are going to be where i have our um trade company headquarters um the way the trade routes flow are better out of Pollux than they are out of AB as far as like coming across more systems that have trade resources. So I think it'll be a little bit more efficient actually as far as trade routes go. So little old Pollux is uh, actually gonna get to, 
actually going to get to have a head headquarters, even though it's only two planets on that star system. So let's just go ahead and we'll move all our fleets. Bunch of stuff moving. We could uh, do some exploring here. So this Ruins 4 should be a virtual artifact, I think. Yep, okay. okay we're definitely going to be colonizing that. Uh, if Dobrynia has one, we're totally going to be colonizing there. Shoot, we're probably colonizing there whether it has one or not. Okay, so I'm going to head and queue these up everywhere where I have like permanently hot planets or I'm going to keep planets hot. Um, this allows buyouts. Oh no, 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 this is, uh, this is if you want to turn all your industry into dust. That's what that is. And then colonize lava. Good to have that. Here's where I'm building. Lots of influence structures. Um, our influence is, our approval is, we're still in progress there. We're at 249 so far of um, explorations, curiosity explorations. See our approvals coming up a bit. The two systems that don't have, uh, that have the worst, um, you see they don't have any luxury resources. This one and this one. Neither one of them have any luxury resources, so they have the lowest approvals. Um, so uh, that makes me want to get this. And I could probably maybe only build that on those systems that have no luxury resources. That might be a thing I do just to kind of give them, you know, a little bit more approval, kind of get them into the same neighborhood is my other systems that do have luxury resources Dominic Havanen the governor he is now level six okay so he is on AD and he's going to be getting this one clerical corrections increases deposit value on resource deposits by plus one on the system all right so AD four is currently producing six titanium, three red sang, and two void stone. And now it's seven, five, and three. Because he has one deposit of this, two deposits of that, two deposits of that. Populations in these spots. So you have a couple of systems that have a lot of capacity. AG has a lot of colonization capacity. BB has lots of room. CA has lots of room. AE has 10 spaces left. So we get some got getting some room. Remnants looks like we have 10 before I shuffled them around. Pulses. Yep. Our purpose is to kill. You, though, will suffer as well. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you making something of yourselves. Sign the deal. Uh, no, I'm not scared of you, Cravers. You're going to be hostile to me no matter what. Um, so I'm not worried about it. And yes, you have some big scary fleets. And if you have them come after me, then I will build fleet. And, uh, you know, we'll deal with that threat. Uh, if you bring it, then, then I'll respond to it. And it'll be fun. <laughs> 
Okay, um, let's just go ahead and start colonizing here, man. Um, so I guess we'll start from here and kind of flow outward with our outposts. So first one's going to be Fad. So right now we have no income on any of these these new rare resources. I'm going to figure out where to feed these from uh, off camera because <laughs> that's going to be kind of tedious. And I think I'm probably going to skip that colonization graphic because we're going to be seeing a lot of it this turn. Um, let's see, so that one's settled. Probably Harishim next. We, we know what's what with that. There's no need to watch it six times or something. All right, this one's heading over here. To Talitha, where we have two of them. Right, so that planet has and this one also has four even though it's smaller um, it has a lunar deposit right yeah it has a lunar I'm on anomaly I'll go for the, the large one I think they're both average right yeah that's a pretty tough system man too toxic and two lavas. Colonizing there is not for the faint of heart. Okay, we have a new outpost there. Certe, we did. All right, we have a huge ash, a max of six population, or a small ash, three population. Okay, I'm going for the big six one. I think actually, yeah. Even though I would like to do the lava, but I want to get these resources flowing. Yeah, I think it's more important to get the resources flowing, so we're going to do that. some pretty inhospitable worlds. Life form four on a tiny snow. A Galvaran population, huh? Okay. And they're heading for CA5. All right, here we go. Yissel. Lava, ash, 
ash area yeah we're gonna go for the ash because we want to get that virtual artifact resource started right now we see we now have an income two virtual artifacts and six benthic gems already wow nice And right now we have uh, a lot more food income on these planets than we normally would. That's a temporary bonus from, well, there's eternal sunshine, but then there's also something else. Dig deeper, yeah. We have seven turns left and it gives you a plus five food on barren planets so we're going to temporarily have that bonus it's not going to hang around for very long um, but it's definitely going to help us out a bit here uh, the settlers headed to Eta we have the loss ratio heading to Dobrynia and we're going to send this settler ship down to towards Dobrynia. I'm pretty sure that Dobrynia has another one of these deposits of uh, virtual artifacts. So we'll get confirmation of that uh, before the settler ship arrives. We'll get that next turn. We'll know. Okay. Other move. Okay, that guy's going to guard. arrived at Polaris, so yeah, there's nothing to see here, or over at Elyon. So it looks like we're heading to Lyra. Probably Lyra Fajis Chang, or maybe Lyra Chang, I don't know, something like that. We'll head this way. Gistrad. Have one cruising around the other direction. Subterranean one on the snow. Antimatter. Cool. Old habits die hard, man. <laughs> there are bits of the map that are unexplored, but <clears throat> I think I have uh, visibility to just about everything that's relevant. <laughs> Got some action happening here at Cetus. Looky here. One turn away from the Riftborn losing the assist their outpost here. So funds are choking them out apparently. Oh, but they've got reinforcements on the way. So yeah, it looks like that uh, that war between them is uh, definitely kind of spicy. They are definitely throwing down there between each other. If I recall correctly, I have peace with both of them. Yeah, so I can jump right in there, no problem. Life form three, life form three. Ooh, a couple more hydromials. That system just got better. I think I'm gonna jump over here to Lynx and then go. Hmm, there's nothing to explore at Cetus, right? Yeah, you know what? Big part of me wants to see what's going on there though. Let's see. 
he's not going to make it to Lynx anyway. Yeah, that works. We'll just send a probe over there to take a peek. And we'll head this way. Good old hydromio. Yeah. It provides extra food. Nakos. Our scout arrived there. Subterranean one, so that's probably a quadrant mix. Yep. And top tier, uh, the, the, the rare strategic energy deposits. Movement, so I might as well send off a probe or two. Okay, see them. like the next flashy thing is down here at Nolan. I'll head to E10, then I'll figure it out. <clears throat> All right, so we run through these. Ah, yeah, the piece. That's right. Oh, Johnny. You have another matter to discuss with the church? I do. All right. Okay. So it was... Checked it off screen. It was a hydromy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Dust water, deciduous trees. I'm not giving up my dust water. That is deciduous trees. There it is. All right. See, we're close. Hmm. it so that'll give us peace with them so that then they won't attack us at least for now 406 is the offer there we go cool and I checked with Horatio and I checked with the unfallen um, both of them um, is a hard no like there are no conditions right now that they will consider uh, peace with me so your proposal pleases us as much as your presence the church is glad to accept cool so I won them over for now that's great so now we don't have to worry about them attacking us which is great and let me run through everything and see if there's anything I'm missing. Oh, 
Okay, so I tinkered around with it a bit. Um, essentially, uh, I have BD is feeding Talitha, BE is feeding Harish, and BA is going to be feeding Quorum. Um, CA is going to feed Yissel. Um, and then Ita, Serte, Botha, and Dobrynya are going to be fed from AF, AE, BB, and BC. So that's my plan, man. And FAD is being fed, I think, by a D is, uh, is what I decided. Yeah. So that's the plan. Um, we will see you guys in the next episode. Thanks, everybody, for watching.